and Many years ago, more than 1500, the prophet Balaam said, I see him, but not now. I behold him, but not near. A star will come out of Jacob. A scepter will rise out of Israel. Israel will grow strong. A ruler will come out of Jacob and destroy the survivors of the city. Even outside Israel, those of us who pay attention were expecting great things from Israel. And we were told to watch the stars. Perhaps at first it was assumed that the great king was Solomon. Many traveled to hear his wisdom, but he was not a warrior. Eventually, all that he accomplished was destroyed by the Babylonians. Then the Jews who lived out their exile in Babylon assured everyone by what they said that they were still hoping for another. The stars do not lie. The Hebrew psalmist of old, no less than the great King David himself, declared, the heavens declare the glory of God. The skies proclaim the work of his hands. Day after day, they pour forth speech. Night after night, they display knowledge. There is no speech or language where their voice is not heard. Their voice goes forth into all the earth, their words to the end of the world. The language of the stars is universal. Anyone who makes himself familiar with their song can understand what they are singing. They sing of a song of a, they sing of a God who is infinitely creative. The stars deliver his message to those who take the time to listen. That was why we took our journey. The message was written in the stars. They told the world in their universal language of a great king, a God who was appearing in Israel. The stars were calling us to worship him. If the news had been just for the Jews, would the announcement have been written in the stars? To us, it was amazing that there weren't more there to worship him. Why hadn't the world come to see what the stars were talking about? All we knew was that we had to be there. What should we bring? What do you bring a king whose arrival is written in the stars by God himself? Gold made sense to us. What king would not appreciate gold? Frankincense? Surely, frankincense was used in worship. It was used to lift prayers to God in his smoke as it burned on the altar. Yes, this king would pray. He would need frankincense for his worship. Then after much deliberation, we thought of myrrh. True, it was used for burial, but it was expensive, and it would show thoughtfulness that we had been thinking of gifts that would last a lifetime. So we set out on our quest to find the king that the stars proclaimed. It made earthly sense to us that we would go to the palace. Kings have sons who will in turn become kings. Surely we assumed there was, this was one of Herod's sons who would become a great ruler of his people someday. Perhaps he would lead a rebellion and overthrow Rome. That would be a blessing for all of us. Surely that's why his birth was written in the stars. He would be a blessing to all of us. Imagine our surprise when Herod appeared to know nothing about why we were visiting. The stars, however, don't lie. Could there be another? His wise men read the ancient scrolls to tell us that we should look in Bethlehem. We left the palace and listened with our eyes to what the sky was saying. Then it led us to him. It was a small, humble house. The father let us in. He was rough with calloused hands and strong arms. He didn't look very kingly. He looked more like a peasant, perhaps an honest man, but not royalty. As we entered the semi-dark room, our eyes took in a simple chamber with meager furnishings. A young girl sat holding the baby, wrapped in simple strips of cloth. A king would have used those cloths for rags but these were used to keep this baby warm. Yet, the stars don't lie. We knew we had heard. Slowly, we approached the girl holding the child and knelt down. Was it right to worship him? Yet, we believed it was. There was wonder in the room. What could all this mean? 
We brought out our gifts. No doubt this was more wealth than this couple had ever seen in their entire lives. Yet in obedience to what the stars had said, in, in obedience to staying committed to what we had decided to give, we offered the gold, the frankincense, and the mirror to this baby. Wrapped in strips of clothes, not imagining how in the world he could ever appreciate them. This was, there was peace in that room. There was peace in our hearts, though in the moment, we really couldn't understand what was really happening. We rose and left the room after congratulating the parents on the birth of what appeared to be a healthy son. Then we headed home, going by a different route to avoid Jerusalem, because we dreamed of danger there. This little family didn't need Herod messing with their lives. We pondered much on the way home about what we had done. Had we been right? Yet the stars do not lie.